because of folks like you. It starts on that side. Dear Dawn, glad you got better. I would have got your get well present to you a lot sooner, but I kept drinking it from myself, trying to keep it away from Mary. <laughs> One of your Mary, many admi admirers, Shirley Tanner. Mm. Mm. Shirley Tanner also, she was a psychic. Very good one. A very good one. Very, very good one. And w one time we asked her, one time, remember we were at the house, and we after Mary died, I think one time we said to her, do you have any insight? Yeah. And she clammed up like a, like she just stopped. Yeah. She just stopped. Yeah. So we knew not to go there. Yeah. You asked her when? When did you ask her this? After Mary had died. Um, oh, you did? We all knew that Shirley was like a psychic. She had visions and she could read people and it was amazing. But after Mary died, we were at the house. I don't remember why, maybe just to visit them. And we asked Shirley, because we, we were allowed to call her Shirley, by the way. She liked to be called Shirley, not Mrs. Tanner. And we said to her, you know, you have this amazing gift, this power. Do you, is there anything that you, that you know? Because at that point, we were wanting to know and she just looked at us and she said, nope. And she had that look on her face like, don't bring it up again. And that's the one time we knew, okay, Shirley has spoken, we'll not bring it up ever again. I can't imagine how that woman suffered losing her daughter. I just can't imagine what she, what she went through. <laughs> frame from exactly when we said goodnight to when they saw her at Dairy Queen it was very challenging to put that time frame back together because it was a weekend we had been drinking beer time is not if it, you go home when you're tired yeah I think she if you feel she like was it. leaving the party early because she had to leave early in the morning yes to because, go to Waltham right yeah because a friend of ours was in a car accident, a guy named Boob, and the funeral was going to be in Waltham, Massachusetts, because that's where the guys from the bowling alley lived, and Mary never made it. In fact, we were at Kennebunk Beach between the party on the hill and then Kennebunk Beach, and then because she was crying, because she was, she was saddened by this, the loss of these folks, and so we consoled her, and we decided, you know what, it's, it's time to go home, so we made our way. We got dropped off at Cooper's Corner, I believe, and then we went our separate ways. So the time frame on when they saw her at the Dairy Queen could have been 10 minutes, it could have been an hour. What time of day was it when you let her go, when you uh, left her at Cooper's Corner? It was nighttime. It was dark. It was dark. Um, <laughs> because everyone's doing their thing, you know. Go back to the 50s when people rode their cars back and forth, you know, on the beach. Yeah. It was kind of like a circle. It was like the hill, uh, the beaches, the monastery, uh, Cooper's Corner, and then back. Like a big, people would just drive around. And I remember being on the beach, and it was not bright daylight. And she was crying. About her dead friend. About her dead friend. Mm -hmm. and, and feeling very sad for her fiancé and his family and their, fr and their friend's family. I don't know when I walked down here the first time and I saw that. If you don't live for something, you die for nothing. And she died for nothing. She was killed because she wanted to get home to go to a club. Boyfriend's brother's funeral. <sighs> Got a bad looking tire. <laughs> Mind your way. You should have brought some spray paint.
I don't know. I think of something. It's kind of like the day the cop I kind of ambushed. I brought him down here and we were headed back and he looked at me and he said, why are you doing this? And I said, because she was my friend, you know? He's like, why are you doing this? I wanted to tell him it was a really stupid question, but I didn't. I just said, because she was my friend. Back when I was a teenager in, in the 70s, there were, Kennebunk was a small, sleepy town. We didn't really have a whole lot to do. We had a drive-in. We had the bowling alley, which was pretty much our hangout. We went to potties on hot summer nights, oftentimes up here in the woods. And on Sundays, uh, the Thunderbird skydivers used to jump up here on the weekends. And this was an activity that we liked to do, is come up on a Sunday afternoon and watch the skydivers jump up here off old number 10 at Gracie Evans Field. There had been a big potty the night before, maybe a mile or two from here. and. The next day I came up here as, as I often did. I was up here with my cousin Linda that day to watch the skydivers jump. We drove on in up to Gracie Evans Field and we were parked along uh, the side of the field along with a lot of other people that came up to watch. And I remember sitting on the hood of her car and the skydivers were getting ready to do their first jump. And we watched the, the, the plane taxi down the dirt runway to take off for their first jump. And when they went up, they didn't gain altitude like they usually did. They just kind of made a, a low circle close to the ground. And we thought, well, that was kind of curious. And seems so they made a second circle. And then they came in for a landing and they taxied all the way down to the far end, kind of opposite the field from where we were standing or sitting and stopped and they all got out. We thought, well, maybe they had um, trouble, engine trouble with the plane or something. And we're all just trying to see what they were doing and it you know, looked like they were looking at something in the field and um, we were just chit-chatting, waiting to see what was going on. And then the, uh, the guy who ran the operation started walking through the, the rows of cars and just saying, you know, everyone just get out of here. Just, just everyone leave. This place is gonna be crawling with cops any minute. So they just found the body of a girl. And it, it just shocked us. It was Kennebunk, it was a small, quiet town. Things like that didn't happen in Kennebunk. And so we all just backed out, we left. And then the buzz around town was, oh my God, what happened? Who could it be? Is it someone that we know? Is someone missing? And it seemed like Back then, it seemed like it took a long time to find out who it was, but in reality, it was maybe only a few days. And when we found out that it was Mary Tanner, and it was someone that we knew, we knew her well. She was one of us. She was um, a couple of years ahead of me in high school. Uh, it, it was just so shocking. And so the next question was, my God, what happened? Who, who did it? Was it random? Was she targeted? It could have been any one of us, but it was Mary, and why was it Mary? And who could it be? Is he still around? Assuming it's a he, but I'm sure that it was. Do you think he's still around? You know, I, I do. I do. Just something in my gut tells me that he's around, and he got away with murder. Thank you. 